Oh, hello there. I was just reading some of my valentines. Don't I have a lot of them? Well, I'm certainly glad that I'm going to have a valentine box after today, so I'll have some place to put them and keep them so that they won't get all torn up and, and uh, so I won't lose some of them. Look at all the valentines I have. I'm going to put them in a nice pile right now, though, and put them aside so that we can go ahead and talk about our valentine box. Now, if I started from the very beginning to make my valentine box like some of you're going to, I don't think I'd have time to finish the whole thing. So I've gone ahead and almost made the whole box. But I'm going to show it to you, and I'm going to add some things, and I'm going to show you what I have done and what you're going to be able to do. Will that be all right? All right, just a minute while I put these valentines off the table here. And then I'll show you how I started out. Now, the first thing I did was to take the lid off my box. And since I have so many valentines, I used a great big box. And here it is without a lid. It has red crepe paper all around it. And you know there's a very easy way of finding out just how much crepe paper you're going to need to go around the box. This is crepe paper, and it comes about, oh, that long, I think, don't you? But I had to cut some of this off. But what you do is take your crepe paper and stand it up right alongside the box. Now, ordinarily, it'll be about this much taller than this piece is, but you stand it up alongside the box, and then you put three fingers that are resting right on top of the box, and then, at the top finger, you cut it off right there. So you have about that much crepe paper sticking up over the top edge of the box. And then you start unrolling the crepe paper. Now you can start at any corner that you want to and roll it all the way around the box. Now, remember that when you tape it on, or if you're going to use paste, that you don't want this extra crepe paper sticking up over the top. You want to make it come just even with the top of the box, and then you'll have some sticking out below. And you can ruffle it like this is ruffled all the way around the bottom. Don't you think that looks nice? And, and later on, we'll add some other things so that that ruffle will even be prettier. I'll show you how to ruffle. It's very easy with crepe paper. You take a strip of crepe paper, or in this case, you'd use it right around the bottom of the box. And you put your two thumbs together on this side, and your first two fingers together on the other side, and you make a V out of them, just like this. See? Now, you don't pull too fast or too far apart, but you give a little pull like this, and did you see the crepe paper stretch? and it makes a little wrinkle in the crepe paper. Then you move your fingers over into that same V position, and you give another little stretch. See, there's another one. And you do it again, and again, and again, and again, as many times as you want to. And if you're doing it around the bottom of your box, you go clear around the bottom so that you have a nice looking little ruffle, just like this one. Well, that's how I got the ruffle along the bottom of my box. Well, the next thing I did was to take a piece of the white crepe paper and put three fingers down on it again and cut right along that line. You can cut the whole piece of crepe paper that's all wadded up like this. And then when you crinkle the edges, I crinkled the top and the bottom of this piece. See, it's just three fingers wide and I ruffled the top, and I ruffled the bottom. And see what a nice, long piece of crepe paper I have? So that now what I'm going to do is wrap it right around the bottom of the box. I'm going to put the, the white, narrow strip of crepe paper onto the red crepe paper. Don't you think that will be pretty? I'm stuck some tape on here, and I'm going to start around this corner. 
going to tape it down so that it'll stay. And you can use paste if you want to. But let me warn you, if you're going to use paste, you must be very careful. Because if you're going to paste crepe paper on your valentine box, the paste is very thin, you know, and so is the crepe paper. So you have to be careful and not use too much paste. Otherwise, it'll soak right through the paper and it'll look very messy. So if you're going to use paste, use just a little bit at a time. And then, too, you might have some trouble with the paste sticking on the crepe paper. So this is what you want to do if you're going to have some trouble with it sticking. Put your paste on, on the piece of crepe paper and then hold it to your box and leave your fingers there and count to 20. Now, if you can't count to 20, maybe your mother will help you count to 20. But after you've counted to 20, then you take your hand away, then it'll stick on just fine. Now, you see, we have the red crepe paper on the box all over it with the ruffle around the edge, and then the narrow ruffle of the white crepe paper. You can use any colors you want to, but I thought red and white were very nice for Valentine's Day. Now, let's see, what else can we do? Don't you think this needs some decoration on it? All right. Let's stick one of these on right here. Another one? All right. Put another one on right there. Now, let's put a heart right in the middle of it, should we? All right. We'll put it on this one right here. There. Do you know what those are? These are paper doilies. Would you like to know how to ruffle them like this? All right, I'll show you. Right. I've put two paper doilies on here, and in the middle of this paper doily, I've pasted a red heart. Oh, the red looks so nice against the white. Now, let's look at the paper doilies and see how to make the little fringed piece that we put on the box. Here is a paper doily. You can buy them at the dime store, I believe, and, or your mother might have some right at home in the cupboard somewhere. See the center piece here? The big piece of paper that isn't all cut out like the rest of the doily is? Well, I'm going to tear that right out of the center. It's very easy to tear, and you have to be careful that you don't tear the whole doily apart. There it comes, just about out. There it is, it's gone. You won't need the center, so you can throw that away. Now, don't throw it on the floor. Put it with the rest of your scraps so that it doesn't clutter up the uh, room that you're in. Now, you see, here is the paper doily with the hole in the center. So now, you can almost pretend like you're going to make a fan and put a pleat right here. Just fold it over a little bit and more, and more, and another pleat, and one more, and then if you roll up a piece of li a little piece of tape, or you can paste it to together too, put it right in the center, there. Now that's just what we put on the side of our Valentine box. Those are very easy to make, and I know you'll have a lot of fun doing it. Well, next comes the lid to the Valentine box. And you want, first of all, to put a slit in the lid that your Valentines will fit through. Can you see the slit that I put in the lid? Right here, I'll stick my finger through the back. And then you want to take two pieces of crepe paper and put one across the top on this side of the slit, and another one on the other side. And if you overlap them a little, you see, I can stick my finger right up here. If you overlap them a little, then you can fold the crepe paper down through the hole so it, your cards and your valentines will slip through easier than they would if you just left the line across here like this. I'll show you the inside of the lid of my box so that you can see how I pulled some of the crepe paper through and then taped it down tight. Now, 
for the for the rest of other part of the of the lid. This is what I've done. Remember when we took and put the narrow strip of white crepe paper around the bottom of the box and we ruffled it on the top and on the bottom? Well, that's what I did around the top of the box, too. Right here, I put a strip of white crepe paper clear around, all the way around. And then inside the white crepe paper strip, I put a narrower strip of red crepe paper. And you can see that it's ruffled on the top and on the bottom, too. Well, now that's taken care of, isn't it? Let's see if it fits on the top of the box, should we? All right. There it is. And there I have a Valentine box. Oh, you wonder what's on top of it? Well, come over and look and see. I put a doily on top of it, and I cut out a paper heart, a red heart, and put on the white doily. Doesn't the white paper doily look nice on this red covering that's on the top of the box? Would you like to know an easy way of baking red hearts for Valentine's Day? Well, I'll show you. You take a piece of paper the size that you want your heart to be, and you fold it in half like that. So that you have, I like a little book, but it's folded right in half. Then you take a pencil or a crayon or whatever you use to mark with and make a half of a heart. Like this. And you cut that out. That and right around there. And this is what you have. When you open it up, there's your heart. Wasn't that easy? Tomorrow, we're going to make some Valentines. I think you've probably been making some already. But if you'll have some paper, red and white, and some scissors and paste, we'll make Valentines tomorrow. Bye now. Won't you join Sunny again in her house with a magic window tomorrow at 5 o'clock? The Magic Window is produced by Argus Sunquist, directed by Jake Dunlop, and is a WOI-TV studio production. Technical direction under the supervision of Mark Clark. <laughs>